Interview and job search strategies at work. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy New Year. This is the first of the new year. Hope everybody had a great holiday and great time with their friends and relatives. There's one thing that I reflect on, actually, during the holidays, and it's really family and having the, you know, being able to just be with them, right? And having the, you know, not having to work, you know, and being able just to really relax with them and and really enjoy their company. Of course, you know, I'm fortunate because I I don't have to um, get up at 6 a.m. every day and, and go work. 12 to 15 hours a day, uh, like other, other jobs. I work in it and our field is a little different. We don't do, typically we don't do manual labor. You know, we don't have all those grueling tasks of being outside in the weather for long periods of time. We really have it easy. Actually, it's a really, you know, easy job, uh, physically, mentally, I wouldn't say so much, but physically it's, it's definitely an easier job. So this first of the year, I, I'll tell you a story. I was talking to an individual. She's 23 years old. And her deal is like this. She works for a very large company. And she wants to get an IT. She wants to do cybersecurity. So I met this individual at a, a Sam's Club, maybe probably week ago, week and a half ago, something like that. At any rate, we talked a little bit and the good thing is the advice that um, she gave me was better than the advice I gave her actually. It's actually what I find often when I converse with other people is they're going to give me something that I don't know. They're going to give me the little nugget of information that I don't have. For instance, uh, she gave me a good a YouTube channel that I could watch, Bitbytes, I believe it is. And her perspective on IT. And I'll, I'll tell you something. If you met a person who isn't who wants to do IT or wants to be in IT and they're passionate about it and excited, that's a person really to talk to. Because it's, it's really their hobby. And they're just getting paid for their job. They're paid for their hobby, really. So really, why am I telling you this story? What's the point here? Why, why do you care for those who are listening? What's the point? The point is... For those of you out there who are like, well, I'm, I'm too old, you're 80 years old, you're 70 years old, whatnot, or you might be too young. Maybe you think, oh, I'm too young, you're, you know, under 18 or whatever, and then, okay, I'm not old enough to do IT or be in IT or whatnot. That's true, because you believe it. Really, what, what it is, is whatever you believe. If you believe it, then it's true. No one can, can make you believe something you don't want to believe. And if you believe that, then it must be true pass that belief into something that you want to know, get around individuals who do that thing you want to do. If it's IT, get around individuals who do that. Now your belief is no longer, okay, it's not supportive because you see these other individuals succeeding in the field you want to get into. So your belief starts to slowly but surely diminish a little bit. Maybe it's like, oh, I can't. It goes from a, I can't do it to they do it, but I don't know how to, I wonder if they'll teach me how to do it to, I can do it and I'm going to teach others. It's easy for me to say because I'm here and I know IT, you know, and I don't know everything, of course, but I know IT and I have a job in it. So it's easy for me to say that when you're maybe working at McDonald's or Walmart making 10 bucks an hour and, you know, really, you just want to make an extra $2 an hour, actually. You, want, you don't want to work at Walmart anymore. You want to make an extra two bucks an hour, three bucks an hour, and and get out of there. And, you know, because you want to you want to succeed. You don't want to, you know, be in McDonald's or, or Walmart when you're 30 years old. And right now, maybe you're, you know, 21, 22, 25 years old, and this is the only job you can get, or, or so you believe. And you just don't want to do it. You're like, okay, I can't. I can't see myself working at McDonald's when I'm 30 years old. And you say to yourself, I'm not going to work here at McDonald's when I'm 30. No way, Jose. No way. I'm not going to do that. Now, the point is, or the question, I guess, is how do you do it? What do you do to get started? Well, 
it's it's not easy. I can tell you that. It's an everyday build. It takes a lot of discipline to get to the point where you believe in yourself. And, and it really just starts with one day. And starting with one thing, just do one thing. And that one thing could be as simple as just going on the internet and watching a video about IT or something. Maybe, you know, instead of start instead of trying to go to college and spending a bunch of money learning IT to get a job that may or may not be there, maybe start off with just Googling uh, a company, Googling a job in a company. For instance, IT, information technology, just Google the word and, and put in Indeed or Monster or Career Jet or whatever, that word, uh, information technology, and start there. And the very first thing that pops up, look at what that is. Most likely it's going to be, actually, let me, let me look it up myself, actually, while I'm on this. So I typed in the word information technology in Indeed.com, and the city I put in there is St. Louis, Missouri. First, the very first job is a IT help desk analyst, St. Louis. The company is IntelliTeach, $13 an hour. So I click on that uh, job. It's entry-level job, which means zero to, you know, zero to one year, zero to two years. Job location, Missouri, Missouri, St. Louis, full-time. Education level, high school. So if you have a high school diploma, you're good. Travel preference, none. Job shift, any. Uh, job category, information technology, duties, description and du job duties. And, you know, they have their corporate stuff, the little dealy does here, benefits at the bottom. And I usually ignore that stuff because I, I know what I want. Um, and relaxed time off or comfortable, relaxed dress code, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go into the meat and potatoes. So the duties really are um, serves, of the, serves as the initial contact for reporting technical issues and answering questions regarding the upgrades installation and other software hardware network issues okay what that means is like um you're working like say you have uh nothing more than if you worked at mcdonald's you have a problem a technical problem maybe the beef isn't good cooked enough whatever let's just say that so the, you're the initial contact reporting the technical or the issue the problem the customer says my burger is not cooked properly okay that's reporting the issue right answer questions the customer might say, uh, does this burger have salt on it? And you can answer that question. Upgrades. Let's let's say upgrades. Can I upgrade my hamburger to pickles? Can I put pickles on it? Yes. Okay. Installations. Um, the hamburger or double quarter pound of cheese, how is it installed? Well, it has burger. It has double quarter, che uh, double quarter beef. It has uh, uh, cheese. It has quarter, uh, quarter onions on it. What else does it have? Pickles. It has ketchup, a mustard, and a bun, sesame seed bun. And other and the other one, it says, and other software, hardware, network issues. Okay, yeah. So the other one is accurately, um, say, the client technical issues, meaning like talk about it properly, talk about the hamburger, talk about it at length, you know, really inform the customer about the burger or the double quarter pound of cheese, right? Um so effectively implement the steps found if available. All, a lot of this stuff really sounds like it's way over your head and it sounds really technical uh, when you read through it. Uh, clearly and thoroughly document requests for assistance in our ticketing management system. Ticketing management system, nothing more than you get a ticket. Uh, double quarter pound of cheese, no onion. Okay, that's a ticket. That's an order. And it's nothing, it's, it's a lot different. But if you just think in the terms of you work at McDonald's and you work in IT, they're very, some of the things are similar. The aspects of the job are very similar, customer, customer facing wise. You know, I, I will say that this job in particular, it pays 13 bucks an hour. That's the low end actually, you know, and you figure you're probably making 10 bucks an hour at McDonald's or 10 bucks an hour at Walmart. That's an upgrade for you as an individual, if you live in the St. Louis area. At the bottom, it says salary, of course, $13 an hour, and then $15 an hour after the first year with incremental raises or incremental increases. Now, obviously, you want to come in with the mindset of like, I'm going to be here and do the best as I can, best possible I can do. 
I'm not going to, um, I'm going to do everything they need me to do. Even if it pays me 13 bucks an hour, you know, you're, you're going to walk in there, you know, just know this, you're going to walk in there and there's some guy or girl who's worked there more than a year and they only make 15 bucks an hour. Maybe they worked there two years. Let's say they make 16 bucks an hour and they may be a sourpuss basically, you know, they may be a sour apple. They're like, you know, okay, fine. Take it for what it is. You know, they obviously don't like the job or they would move on. Right. Or they'd have a better job. You no, know, me telling you this right now, you would say, Oh, you know, why would I leave the job making 13 bucks an hour when, you know, it's great money. I made 10, I made 13 now. And why would somebody who's making 16 an hour dollars an hour leave? I don't know. We don't know the answer to that. That's on them. That's the person they are. That's just how it is. It doesn't have to be you though. And the thing I would say to those individuals, like, okay, thank you. Bye. And move on. And so it's really just, you know, uh, fast step out of there. Um, they're just going to drag you down basically those type of individuals. I mean, let's just, let's just play it out. Right. Let's say you do believe these individuals and you listen to them and they're, let's say they're valid. Let's say that they've been working there two, you know, two years and they make 16 bucks an hour and they're not happy and everything they say is a hundred percent accurate. Right. You gotta ask yourself if, if they don't like it, why are they still here? Obviously, you know, why they haven't applied for a leadership position? Why haven't they done that? You got to ask yourself those type of questions when you talk to these individuals and really understand why I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Most of the individuals that you talk to like this, the second they're threatened with their job, their attitude changes 100%. They're just there. Hey, misery loves company, man. You know, and, and I, I know t telling you this right now, you haven't even got the job, right? You're like, Hey Gary, I haven't even got the job yet. You know, and you're telling me about all these like, personality things or these um these little you know co-worker qu um you know co-worker quirks or whatever that i have to deal with that i'm gonna potentially deal with i don't want to hear all that i just want to go there and do my job going in there going in knowing these type of things before you get the job is really going to prepare you for oh okay you know just just know that you know um if you're the type of individual who wants to make more money, then this is just a start, really. 13 bucks an hour is a start. Well, well, while you're there at work and you go home and you do something at home that helps you at your job, the other individuals who's making 16 bucks an hour, they're not doing anything, man. They're going home and they're just watching TV. And, you know, they're not they're not doing anything better. That's there's nothing wrong with that. That it is what it is, but don't take advice from them. It's not really, there's, it's not good advice because obviously, if, you know, they don't like their job. Why don't they leave? You know? So that's, that's all I'm saying. Don't take their advice. If they have good, good feedback for you, cause you know, you can find something bad about every job, you know, every job, you, you know, if you make a million dollars, you know, ask somebody who makes a million dollars a year. Oh, what about you? Why don't you like about your job? I'm sure they can tell you a hundred, a hundred things easily but to you and me who don't make a million dollars a year we're like whoa wait a minute i make a million bucks a year why would i ever what would i ever have to complain about that there's nothing i would ever have to complain about it a million bucks a year come on now i'm not there's nothing i can say that no 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 way but there probably would be right if somebody made a million dollars a year and that was their base they're like their starting point basically or where they were at that time so a lot of people ask me uh when i talk to them you know, just in passing jobs and all that, you know, on the street or wherever. Hey, you know, whatever. They ask, like, what do I get out of this? What's the benefit for me? What do I get? You know, you may ask yourself, like, why do you do this? Why do you care? Like, if I get a job or if you get a job, why do you care? Here's, here's what I care about. Or here's why I do this, right, basically. I get, it's almost like a natural, a natural high when... You can help somebody go from, you know, working at McDonald's, man, or Mc, or KFC or McDonald's or Hardee's or Burger King or, or wherever like that. And they're like 25 years old and, and their whole life, man, they've been told like, look, you need a college education, you need a college degree. You'll never be able to do it. And 
a lot of people, you know, t- to this day, people still say that even though there's an internet and everything, people still believe that stuff. They still believe um, their relatives, their friends, whoever, who haven't done it. Maybe their friends are not in the IT field. Usually that's what it is, right? Because if you're in the IT field, you, you know basically this is how easy it is to get a job, entry level job. Of course, the higher up, higher job you get, of course, it's harder. But the entry level job, everybody knows how easy it is uh, to get a job like that. And wh- why I do it is, if another person, if I reach out to another person and and they, I help them get a job making two bucks extra an hour, right? In IT, what what's going on is there's a good there's a good idea or there's a good there's a good hope that their family tree has changed because maybe their whole life they've only gotten by. They've only made, you know, 15 bucks an hour is the most they've ever made. Maybe they've made, you know, their family has only made 40,000 a year. Let's say, right. That's most they've ever made. Their whole family has. Well, it's, it's just my belief that it can help you make six figures in the shortest amount of time not having a college degree because you don't need a college degree to, to work in IT and make uh, six figures, hundred thousand dollars a year. You really don't actually. Of course there's the what if or the, Oh, what about this? And Oh, what about that? There's what if and everything, by the way, just so you know, right. Just so you know, there's what if and everything. And you know, like I said, the, what I get out of it is somebody succeeding. Somebody else is becoming better, you know, like just like, no, you, you're not going to tell me uh, I have to go through this, you know, box or whatever, you know, to order to get, you know, the retirement pay or whatever. I have to work somewhere for 30 years like IBM or whatever, and then I'll retire, you know, with whatever. Well, I, the kind of lifestyle I'm talking about for my T is you build upon it every year. You build upon it every day so that you can take a vacation and you can choose your own lifestyle. You can choose your own lifestyle in your IT. You know, um, you can choose where you want to live, you know, um, because IT open that open those doors up for you. You know, even if I'll I'll just go back to this, even if you're a nurse, let's say based on what country you're a nurse in, that doesn't translate into every country. You know, Um, whereas IT will. Oh, you're um, this certification. I let's say CCNA. Well, everywhere in the world, a CCNA is the same, the same credential. You won't get the same pay because of, like, say, different nationality, right? But the certification is the standard across uh, the world because that, that certification actually holds holds true. The MCSE, which is Microsoft Certified, uh, what is it? Whatever the new one is, Microsoft Certified Technical Professional, something like that. And then you have, like, your Security Plus. Then you have your Net Plus and A Plus. I'll just leave you with this. Three things to do today, today, in order to help yourself get a IT job. First thing is write down what you want to make overall. What do you want to make in one year from now? What would you like to make hour wise? Second thing is that translates to a dollar amount. Let's say it's 30 bucks an hour, which is 60,000 a year. Let's say next thing you do. Second thing, go on indeed and look for a job that pays 60,000 a year. So that becomes your base. That becomes where you want to get to right now. The third thing is look at the job description. What does the job description say in it? Of course, we're talking about IT jobs. So you want to do information technology, search for that, and then 60000 a year if that's what you want to make. Figure out what those skills are in that job description and then draw an arrow from where you are now to there. So it's 300 and how many days left in the year? 360 some odd days left in the year. Make a plan or write a little note for every month. This is what I'm going to do in this month to get to that, that, that goal. What skills do I need to get? What type of training do I need? Free training, of course, everything is free on the internet. Of course, you have to pay for certifications if you need those. But what, what in the job description, what does it want me to have? What type of job? Certifications do I, uh, rather, what type of um, certifications or what type of knowledge do I need to gain between now and that year to make that money? And it's okay if if this changes every month, every day. 
your goal becomes bigger or, or smaller. It doesn't matter. What matters is you have something to, to reach out to. You have something to attain um, that's out there. Okay, that's what I want to attain. So that's that's the um, that's the approach to have. So, like, thank you, everybody, for listening to this podcast, and have a great day.